How's it going, everybody? Uh, uh, it's your boy. Hold on, I might redo this. I always say this, and then I always leave it's it. It's your boy. Taking a deep breath here. I'm venturing into uncharted waters. I've never been this deep before. Today, I'm doing something that the past eight episodes have not had. Something a little on the healthier side. What we're doing is a mapu tofu without any pork product. Hold on. We might need to we might need to rethink how we're gonna approach this start. Mapu tofu. A little on the healthier side. Oh my god. <laughs> She's like, Dad, you're good. Where are we doing it? Maybe I kick off my shoe. Oh, <laughs> do it. This is your house. Kick... Hello everybody. In the last video, if you watched it all the way through, I wouldn't blame you if you didn't. But you probably should go back and do it. I mentioned my upcoming beef with uh, Julian Solomita. And this is due to the fact that everything I make he seems to then a couple days later roll out a video for. This happened with the orange chicken, which is, I got 11 views on that video, I guarantee you, one of those could have been Julian. Aside from that, aside from the orange chicken debacle, I make a pasta episode, he comes out with a pasta episode. In my folder, I have English breakfast, and what do you know? He comes out with an English breakfast episode. So here's what I'm doing. Before Julian Solomita can get to it, I'm doing a gluten-free, vegan, mapu tofu. And this is also a double-decker. Double down! If you haven't seen the rice, the rice cooker challenges, you're in for a treat. This isn't an official rice cooker challenge because I don't really know if it can get done, but this recipe might be done in the time it takes for rice to be done in that rice cooker. And I think that's a pretty impressive feat. It was when I did it with the orange chicken. It was when I did it with the loco moco. And it's gonna be when I do it with this mapu tofu. Mapu tofu. Mapu tofu. Not mapu tofu. Mapu tofu so I don't get flamed. This is honestly, in all honesty, good intention. I have a good heart in me. And I'm doing this to promote not only healthier vegan cooking, I suppose, but show that there are alternative ways to make delicious foods. Even if you've never had them before, you can just use your little noggin. You use your noggin right there, you think, oh, cauliflower kind of breaks down like ground pork. Which, uh, it doesn't really, but you, you, if, you, if you stretch it, if you stretch it a little bit, uh, you can kind of see it. So here's what we're gonna do. Mapu tofu, I'm gonna give you a little rundown of what's going on here. It's traditionally made up with Szechuan peppercorn as the prime seasoning. Uh, what I got here are some bird's eye and then some Japanese chili pods, both dried. Sue me, I'm gonna reconstitute them. Don't worry about it too much. Uh, garlic and ginger, this is squeezed garlic. Don't hate me, it's stinking up the whole house. Uh, extra firm tofu, the recipe does call for silken, so if you like silken tofu, do that. But I've never bought tofu before, so uh, I just bought whatever I saw at the store that looked best. I'm a big package guy. I like a good package. If the package is nice, I usually I usually go for that one. Uh, some sugar, which is optional. The cauliflower, which is gonna be replacing the traditional ground pork. Uh, how I'm gonna make that substitution is I'm just gonna pack the cauliflower with as much umami flavor as possible. If you were to put all cuisine into some into some Venn diagrams and you like Italian, Asian, whatever one falls in the Asian category, even remotely, we're kind of throwing it on the cauliflower. So we got some shiitake mushroom powder, we got some tomato powder, we got some mustard powder, some uh, garlic powder, some white pepper, and some ginger. So all those are just kind of like umami bombs that I'm gonna sprinkle onto this cauliflower, toast it up, roast it up, and kind of break it up to resemble in a way like a ground product, like a ground pork would kind of crumble up if it didn't have too much fat in it. There are some more ingredients I forgot to tell you about. One of them is black bean sauce. This is this is the package I got. I cannot, I do not abide by this product, nor do I sponsor this product. I've, I've said not a sponsor, but I'd like to be sponsored for a lot of things here. I don't know what this is. This is the only sub, sort of black bean sauce that existed in my Fred Meyer. It came attached to a pre-made steamed rice bowl. It's in there, I need two tablespoons of it, so if it's bad, we won't get, it's not a lot. And then some uh, recipe called for chicken stock. I'm doing veggie stock that I just simmered on the stove right now. I broke a uh, carrot and a stalk of celery in half, mixed it with a star anise pod, Szechuan peppercorns, some black pepper, just a little bit of salt, some scallions. And that's, that's the recipe. It's pretty simple, it's pretty fast. Now that I'm done explaining it, I think it's gonna go along pretty quick. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get our rice going. Make sure you sift your rice, clean your rice, cause not all rice is clean. So a cup of rice, a cup and a half of uh, water, Rice is down, it's time to get cooking. Put our rice away so we can get some space. The first thing we have to do is we're gonna cut up our cauliflower. Another thing that we can simultaneously do is what this is, is this is bird's eye chilies, 
uh, Japanese chili pods and a star anise pod. So the star anise pod is not very traditional. It's kind of just my 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 swing. It's my it's my thing. I I connected the dots between Chinese five spice and Chinese mapu tofu, and I came up with a star anise clove, and that's how we're elevating our mapu tofu to new heights. That's what we're doing. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and get a pan on high heat. Uh, let those toast before we rehydrate them. Right, we definitely want to rehydrate them. And then we're gonna fry them up, make a little chili oil, and add all of our other aromatics to that chili oil. So while those are toasting, um, just sort of break off your cauliflower heads. Okay, so we got our chopped up cauliflower here. Toasting up our peppers. They're looking good. Uh, turn the heat down just a little bit so they don't burn. Cauliflower to the bowl. And to our cauliflower, what we're going to be adding, as previously mentioned, a little bit of mustard powder. I added some white pepper in yeah. my cauliflower. Uh, add some ginger, some white pepper, some garlic powder, uh, some mustard. Add a little bit of shiitake mushroom powder. If you don't have shiitake mushroom powder, maybe add some shiitake mushrooms in here. That'd be nice. And then a little bit of tomato powder, some salt, and then some pepper. Nice and simple. It's not very simple. There's a lot of flavors going on there, but it's just, listen, if we're gonna enter this with the expectation that our cauliflower is gonna taste like pork, we really gotta attack that shit. We really gotta get on it, we really can't. No half measures, we gotta go for it. Uh, stir your peppers, make sure they don't burn, even if they do burn, it's fine. We're gonna reconstitute them. Uh, get your water on a pot. Get them to boil, maybe take out your star anise pod so that doesn't get too wet. Uh, how am I feeling? How am I doing? I think I'm looking pretty good on time. I think that it might come back to bite me in the ass. I took so long to cut the cauliflower and I got a bunch of shit going on and you know, I don't really know what I'm doing. I've never made this before. I'm not letting it bother me right now. And if uh, you're letting it bother you, skip to the end of the video. When it's done, <laughs> say that same shit to me. Cause I guarantee you won't. Cauliflower, we're gonna bake it in a 425 degree oven. I don't know, I'm just trying to develop some flavor on this cauliflower, really. And I think adding it straight to the pan wouldn't really be enough, so I'm gonna try and uh, oven bake it first, and then I'll add it to the pan after that, so it can get a little bit more, I guess, uh, texture. What's going on? Well, I mean, people like rice cauliflower, don't they? Yeah, and I just didn't want it, but you see like those little bits right there? You tell me that, 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 like, that little bit right there couldn't all be ground pork. Definitely could, definitely gonna be delicious. Y'all don't know what you're in for. Cauliflower's in the oven. The next thing's actually maybe cutting up our tofu and possibly toasting our Szechuan peppercorns. So we're gonna toast our peppers. No, no, I said that already. <laughs> Nor is that what we're doing. We have toasted. I get very frantic in these types of situations where I am against the rice cooker. And even though this is an unofficial <laughs> rice cooker challenge, I'm still timing myself and it's still really not feeling good. So those are our toasted peppers, um, our star anise pods set aside. What we're gonna do is we're gonna toast our Szechuan peppercorns before we grind them in our mortar and pestle. And how I think we're just gonna do that without making another pan dirty, we're just gonna do it in our wok. Sounds like a bad idea because woks get so damn hot, but you know, go ahead and add your star anise pods to your mortar and pestle. How's the view? So while our peppercorns are toasting and our chilies are rehydrating, what we're gonna do is we're gonna sort of small dice our tofu. Actually not small, sort of like a small two medium. That doesn't matter, cause one size fits all. I've seen Julian do, I saw his tofu video. He was making buffalo spicy chicken nuggets out of tofu. You know what man? That's innovative, that's probably a recipe you'd make in your spare time, you know what I mean? You'd eat on a weeknight, you know, you want some chicken wings, or not chicken wings, you want some uh, chicken nuggets. I'm making food. This is like, this is a recipe. This is like a culture thing, okay? I, I'm not saying that buffalo chicken nuggets can't be your culture, Julian. If you're gonna do something, you gotta do it right. And I, I can't help but think of the cauliflower and my tofu might be doing something a little right. That was a whole, uh, thing of tofu, so maybe that was a lot, but let's be real, I'm not really using it for anything else. Get our chilies out of the water. That's ah. a good shot of peppers. Oh. Where you going? Where you going? Okay. Uh, so in the mortar pestle right now is our Szechuan peppercorn and our star anise pod, both toasted, and we're just gonna grind this into a fine powder. 
Where'd you go with that thing? You like riding these bitches down. We also have a spice grinder, but you want it to look cool. So, this is our finished spice blend. It is pretty fine. There's some chunks in there, but nothing too unmanageable that won't break down in the oil and the chicken stock. The next step is to actually start working on the mapu tofu. Um, we're gonna cut up our peppers into just like sort of small rings, fry them up in a little bit of oil. And the idea is just on a low heat to saute these peppers and make sort of a chili oil. In the remnants of the oil, and a little bit of toasted sesame oil. We'll add some uh, garlic, some grated ginger, our black bean sauce, and then our um, our cauliflower. Give our cauliflower a quick little update. I'll pull it out of the oven so y'all can see it. Ah, it does it every time. Steam. Never fails. Good old steam. Yeah, looking great. Smells amazing, it smells really nice. Go back in. Okay, uh, so I moved the Szechuan peppercorns out of the Mortar and pestle, and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna add these chilies back in, and then I'm gonna grind them up to sort of make like a chili paste, a hot chili paste. Just loosely, I don't need to pulverize them, I just need to break them down a little bit. Get this back on some heat. We'll add probably like half this garlic that I got. It's it's very strong. If you have normal garlic, please use that. And I didn't think our garlic was bad, but our garlic was most certainly bad. So, we're gonna go ahead, grate in some ginger. My whole thing is food doesn't have to be super hard, you know what I mean? It's like, if you got more ginger than garlic, then you add more fucking ginger than garlic. If you got more garlic than ginger, you go to the store, you get some more, get some more ginger. Like, not every recipe has to be followed to the T. Everything is definitely up to your interpretation, and like, it's more than, more than possible to play around with stuff, like throwing a star anise pod in your Szechuan peppercorns, just for the, like, you know what I mean? Just for fuck's sake. That was nasty. That plop was gross. Add a little bit of toasted sesame oil, actually. Open up our black bean sauce, cause uh, okay, I guess we need it, huh? Okay, I'm giving y'all. It smells okay. Kind of oniony. Uh, we can give a look in there. Uh, looks goop. Kind of goopy. We're just gonna go ahead. Get a little spoonful. Throw them in. Two spoonfuls. Black bean sauce. If you have normal black bean sauce, please use normal black beans. I'm throwing it away. It's going in the garbage. Is it for real? What if you need more of it Dude, right I, now? I don't want to use more of it. Uh, we're gonna add a little bit of our seasoning mix. Actually, we'll add a little bit more of this. About half. We'll add about half right now, and then we'll add about half once we add the chicken stock. Or not the chicken stock, but the replacement chicken stock. We'll probably pull our cauliflower out of the oven now. He's looking delicious, nice and toasty. Go ahead. Uh, take your crushed up chilies and add them back into the pan with all your other aromatics. How are we looking? Am I seeing? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, this is basically the accumulation of all of our aromatics. We have our black bean paste in there, garlic, ginger, our chili paste, Szechuan peppercorns, half of the ones we're using. Uh, the next step is to add in our cauliflower to this very flavorful mixture and kind of let that all cook together before we let it all reduce with some vegetable stock and the rest of our Szechuan peppercorns. And then we serve. Add the rest of your Szechuan peppercorns. And you know, just to clarify, I'm not bashing none of Julian Solomita's content. I'm sure, I know the guy. I don't know the guy. <laughs> you know, I love me some Jenna Marbles. I love me some Julian Solomita Manita. But sometimes, man, the dude gets me mad. The guy be saying things that just ain't true, just don't work. And I know he never claims to be a professional chef, you know, but man, neither do I. But I know those, maybe I, I do claim those things. I think those are genuinely in my tags. Listen, man, take, t oh shit. We got hyped in your beef. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead. There you go. Add some liquid into this boy. <laughs> Calm it down. Calm him down a little bit. Let him simmer. Anyway, Julian Solomita. What about him? You get angry. I get mad with Julian Solomita. Dude, the way he uses white wine. wine. Dude, what are you saying? <laughs> he uses white wine and then uses rosé? Of course I got a problem with it. I know it's nothing too important, like I should have something better to do with my life, but I don't. <laughs> we don't. We, we don't. don't. So this is my way of hopefully inspiring Julian to make a spin-off version of my Maputo food. 
after he sees my 11 viewed video. Which he always does. He always does, he has so far! Why not now? Sorry. Dude, you looked like you were coming out of like, um, the steam for a minute. Really? Yeah, like that's how mad you were. Dun, dun, dun! The next step is to add our tofu into this mixture and a little bit of sugar along with some uh, chopped green onion. So I'm just gonna finely slice these green onions. I don't know, maybe like a quarter cup. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna add in our tofu into our mapu tofu mixture. Mapu tofu is traditionally more red than this. I don't really know what's going on, but I still think it'll taste similar to how mapu tofu tastes. It's probably the beans. It didn't specify, we tofu looked going that in. up. Tofu going in, along with a little bit of sugar. We're gonna go ahead and make a little cornstarch slurry to thicken this boy up just a bit, uh, which is hot water. And I believe you stir in a little bit of cornstarch and you add that to a soup or to a stock or a broth and it'll oh. sort of make it come together. I think oh. that's what you do. It looks like how Mapu Tofu looks. I'll tell you that right now. How is it? Is that, can you see? Yeah. Okay, that's my good shot. Uh, so now the last step is to add the little bit of the cornstarch mixture to thicken up everything. We'll serve up, get our rice. So we'll let this thicken up. Mapu tofu simmering away on the stove top. Becca's plating up some rice, and I think that we're looking essentially done with dinner. The only thing I'm not too sure about is why all the mapu tofu I be seeing is red, and mine is a little brown. So I do recommend that if you try and recreate, uh, if you try and recreate this, <laughs> if you try and recreate this recipe, uh, just make sure that you find a good quality bean paste that doesn't come with a bowl of rice. I'm still gonna be happy with this end result. It smells good, it smells great. It's just, you know, better quality ingredients is gonna lead you to a better end product. So you gotta get them good ingredients. You gotta get those good ingredients. Get them! Mapu tofu looking mad delicious. I'm really having high hopes for this and I hope it doesn't disappoint me. Without further ado, I think it's time to plate up. Yeah, this is one of your easier recipes, I feel like, or quicker rather. Wipe up the edge. But you know that's how we do. Lots of green onions on top. How yeah. good of a joke is you mess with me, you're gonna be mapu toast fool. You mess with me, you're gonna be mapu toast fool. Maple's tired, I'm tired. <laughs> Let's get to dinner. Uh, I wanna try and get a bite with some nice cauliflower. I know we already got some of these, but just so we can try and make sure we get a nice bite here. Let's see. The tofu looks really good. Okay. Got a bite of everything. Got some rice on there. Maple. You ever, <laughs> Maple. You ever taken a shower and like the water's been so hot it feels cold on your body? Yeah. It's like that on my tongue. It's that pleasant numbness that you hear about, but you don't fully understand when people say like, oh, it's a good spicy, oh, it's a good sour. This is like a good numb. I think that the cauliflower really takes to flavors well. Breaking up the cauliflower really worked well. It does resemble pork. It does eat like pork, like ground pork. Yeah, it's like, if I made it this good, using just the ingredients I had laying around and what I could find, I think the sky's the limit really with this. So. Julian Anyways, Solomita, make this. Julian Solomita, I challenge you to make mapu tofu using cauliflower. And I've been Aaron Mine, and I hope you have a great day.